I think everyone's just about settled in. So let's go ahead and, and get started. Um, <clears throat> good good morning or afternoon, depending on where this broadcast finds okay. you. So then we, you guys can... Oh, I'm gonna, there we go. Um, just want to welcome welcome you all once again to uh, to our uh, virtual Native Storytelling Hour. Uh, it is my honor to be here with all of you today and I uh, want to uh, <clears throat> just again thank you for joining us for this uh, ongoing series. Uh, most of you know my name is Steve Steine. I am one of the program managers here for the uh, National American Indian Alaskan Native uh, Addiction Technology Transfer Center uh, funded by SAMHSA. Uh, my colleague uh, Ella Driscoll is also on the, the, the line. She will be assisting today with chat box and, and uh, any other technical issues that may come up. <clears throat> um, additionally, just as a reminder, the, the content of today's broadcast is created by the presenter and does not represent the views of SAMHSA HHS or the National American Indian Alaska Native ATTC. Uh, and just uh, one other note, um, I know that uh, you know, we know as a center, want to acknowledge the, the, the current political climate uh, and also the uh, ongoing concerns related to the pandemic. We know that this is a stressful time for many and those on the call today may have differing opinions. We just want to remind everyone that as always, to, to be respectful of each other's uh, perspectives and thoughts. Um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm very honored again today to introduce uh, for his last visit with us, Mr. Richard Zane Smith. He is our storyteller for today. Uh, uh, Mr. Smith has been facilitating our sessions for the past three bi-weekly sessions. And this is his fourth and final installment today. Um, this will be the uh, fourth um, or the, I should say the second of, um, of two winter months stories. Um, <clears throat> as some of you know, uh, Richard is an enrolled member of the Wyandotte Nation of Kansas, which is not federally recognized. He is also uh, a uh, IACB certified Indian uh, artisan. And if you haven't had a chance, uh, just please Google Richard Zane Smith and check out some of his work. It's, it's uh, enthralling, it's incredible. Um, he is an active Wyandotte Wendot uh, language and cultural revitalization longhouse um, <clears throat> uh, language and cultural revitalization longhouse ceremonies and spent uh, seven years teaching Wyandotte language storytelling in the Wyandotte public schools. Um, so today, uh, uh, Richard's fourth story uh, is called How Bear Clan Became Healers. Uh, he shared with me that it's it's uh, it's about a, an older couple who's surprised by bears who take them as captives. Um, so I look forward to hearing this story today, as we have in these the uh, previous weeks of Richard's storytelling. At the close of our time today, we will be posting a short uh, survey link in our chat box. Uh, if you're not able to complete this at, at during the the broadcast today, we will reach out to you via email and give you another opportunity to complete that survey. We really value and appreciate your feedback. This survey is very short and just takes a few minutes to complete. It will allow us to continue uh, maintaining our funding and may offer some insight into ways we can improve uh, these type of broadcasts. Uh, so please take a few minutes uh, at the end of today's broadcast to complete that short survey. We are going to be saving the conversation from the chat and sharing that with everyone. So please be aware of this when making comments or posting uh, in the chat box. Uh, we would, of course, remove any sensitive information um, from this uh, text if necessary. So um, as you know, um, and then we'll also be recording this event for later viewing for any of your friends, colleagues, or family members that missed the broadcast today. Um, as you know, you're currently muted. However, you can use the unmute feature at the bottom left portion of your screen or device. Um, and if you, and I think it's in the upper right hand corner of your screen. Um, if you have any technical issues during the broadcast today, please let us know and we'll do what we can to address those and, and make corrections. Uh, just a last piece, uh, just to order of business. Um, our next storytelling event 
will be held um, January 5th, uh, 2021. And we have a really interesting storyteller uh, on, uh, on the schedule. His name is Kiave Bone. He is from North Carolina. He is Cherokee and he'll be sharing some stories with us. Uh, and I'll just kind of leave that as a cliffhanger. But fee, uh, please, if you are able, feel free to join us for our next installment, January 5th. So with that, uh, I think I've covered everything I needed to. Uh, again, I'm honored to uh, have Richard uh, Zane Smith here with us for our storytelling hour. I will relinquish the floor to him. So thank you. Yeah. Uh, so greetings, everyone. Uh, I show you my face. Uh, and uh, yeah, in, the, in this day and age, literally, right? This is like this little box. <laughs> so um, yeah, what I, I was going to share today, first of all, I wanted to say I'm really honored that you guys are here and you're listening. I hope you hear all right. Does everybody hear fine? Uh, okay. Um, I want to um, talk about how, um, well, I'm going to share a story about the Bear Clan uh, specifically because that's the clan of my mother, which is, of course, uh, you know, we're matriarchal, so that's um, our clan. And uh, the, in the, among the Wyandotte and among a lot of other tribes, too, the bears kind of play a, a special place in the in the um, in our culture for being medicine keepers. Uh, and our word for medicine is no quat, de no quat. Um, so the um, First of all, just kind of, I want to talk to you a little bit about our clans. And um, originally, the Wyandotte had 12 clans. Um, now, there's, there is some argument about that because some of them don't exist anymore. Um, and some of them might be sub-clans. Um, and that happened a lot where families would, uh, would drift off. And so we actually have five turtle clans. Um, we've got... Um, the Amarure on Gyaosh, which is the big mossback turtle. We've got the striped turtle, which you see up in Ontario. We have a speckled turtle, which also is up there. They're small turtles. It's also called the small turtle. Um, we have um, the prairie turtle, which is the box turtle. And we have a mud turtle. Now, again, no, no, the mud turtle doesn't exist anymore. Sometimes it was referred to as the soft shell turtle. Um, so it's either a, a soft shell turtle or it's a turtle that we know in our stories, it's the one who dug a hole so that the sun could, um, could come down into, because it was burning up all the people up there, you know, and uh, it was too hot. So, uh, but anyway, uh, so that's just the turtle clans. And then we have, um, we have the deer, the bear, uh, we have, um, the beaver and porcupine. And we have the uh, snake clan, and we have uh, Nariskwa, the wolf clan. So I believe that's all of them there. Um, these are the ones that, um, that were really important. And each one of them, each clan, um, had its own particular uh, gatherings. They would meet together. They had specific duties in the community. A lot of this was lost. So, so we have we have some memories. We know that among the deer clan, this is where a lot of the leaders, and I'm, we're talking about people who were like, um, um, you know, that a community would elect to be their spokesman. Um, the, the clan mothers would allow this person to be a spokesman over a certain number of villages, sort of like a head, head, uh, head uh, chief. We don't like to use the word chief because it's kind of, it makes it look, sound like a boss, you know, or something where, Ours were much more about no. The chief was, the chief was a spokesman of the clan mother basically, and whatever she was saying that this is what needed to be spoken. That's what he did. He spoke. He, that's what he said. And if he didn't do his job, um, he would have his headdress removed. And that's um, there's still still the Mohawk word for a clan mother is the the one who holds the horns, and so uh, the the clan person. Um, who was chosen to be a spokesman would wear a headdress that had these uh, little horns, usually just little deer horns on the side. And uh, that was his mark of distinction. It wasn't like a crown of glory kind of thing. It was just like, okay, he's, he's one of our spokesmen in the village. 
Uh, and it's funny because nobody wanted to do that. Nobody wanted to be chosen to be a clan spokesman because it meant trudging through the snow and it, you know and just opening your house up feeding all these people and everybody would much rather be chosen by the clan mothers to be a hunter or a, a fisherman or uh, or even a warrior but you know no, no not, not a rep i don't want to be a rep i don't want to have to say what she says but it was uh it was an honorable position and uh but anyway the um the deer clan was that the um you know, we, again, there's, there's the turtle clan, there's turtle clans, of course, and each one of them had some purpose. We know that the small turtle, the one, the speckled turtle was the one who created the sun. So a lot of these stories that we have have to do with the foundation of what these clans are all about. Um, and the deer, you know, and, and what it, you know, how it, how it was the first, it was a leader. It was the one that first got into the sky and became one of the constellations. Uh, so, and the other animals, the clan animals followed her lead. But um, so it's, it's just interesting. And, and it's been said uh, among our, um, our, our faith keepers and our clan mother uh, people, they say that, um, to understand the names of our people, the names we give during ceremony, during our green corn ceremony, um, usually, if if we like, if we had all the names that were given, uh, and you put them all together, it would tell a story, because our names are more like, he does this or she does that. This is what she does, and it refers to an act of an animal, you know, that she's that clan that she's a part of. So it it actually remembers. Um, it's a remembrance of these stories. So anyway, that's a little background. Um, the bear clan, of course, like I said, was considered the medicine, the medicine keepers. And uh, I noticed that among Navajos too, as well, you know, the, that that's something that they, they consider the bell, the bear as being, you know, a keeper of medicines. Uh, so I, I know it happens in other uh, other cultures as well. I have a story about that one, but that I might, might not have time for that. Uh, but let's get to the story. Um, this is a time, a uh, um, long time ago, of course, when the people lived up in the, in the colder countries up in Ontario. And this is a time when um, uh, the people would live in small villages, um, some not so small, but they were palisaded villages and they, um, during the summer, everybody had their different tasks and jobs. The women worked mostly in the fields and that, um, and, and they took care of the pottery making and also uh, raising children, this kind of thing. The men were assigned tasks to go do stuff. So they were sent out. So a lot of times there were not a lot of men in the, um, in the villages during the, the summer. Well, um, as it happens, um, men met women and just, um, you know, sometimes uh, when a man met a woman, it was just amazing. It was, it's like magic. It's almost like magic, but it's also like the most natural thing in the world. And this is one couple who met like that. They were each from different villages. And I don't like to say fell in love because it has this kind of weird connotation, but it's just like they knew they were for each other. And when they did come together, they, uh, we didn't have a big marriage, complicated marriage ceremonies or anything like that. Usually it was the clan mother of the woman who decided, yeah, he's the keeper. All right, he can live with us, you know. Uh, now he would he would be an uncle there, you know, in, in that uh, longhouse. So he, he lived with the woman, but he also was kind of the uncle there. Uh, he was, his kids, not his kids, his his family, his sister, his brothers, and that, he was actually really tied to them very closely. So this is how a lot of these clans kind of knit themselves into the community, um, you know, with this kind of uh, crossing like that. Uh, so he's living in a, in a home, basically, that's of the, his, his wife's uh, clan. Well, this couple was very close, like I said, and they, they were just with each other all the time. And this was a, a springtime where they were out together and they were out in the woods. Oh no, I gotta get rid of this phone. <laughs> Sorry about that. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> so anyway, where was I? Oh yeah. Okay. So it was springtime, and and this couple was out in the out in the woods, and they were gathering plants, and um, um, you know it was time for picking strawberry. So they were out with strawberries, and um, and they were together. It was quiet, and all of a sudden, in the woods, four bear just came right right toward them. I mean, they looked around and they realized, you know, they were in trouble. There was a bear coming from the north and he was like this massive uh, grandfather like bear. And then one from the south, which was a much younger bear. And then the, on the other side, the east and west, these were kind of, you know, the, the middle sized bears, I guess, kind of like the story. Uh, but uh, they came and they approached the man. It's almost like they didn't even see the woman. They came right up to the man and the biggest one just came right up to him and just took his paw and just knocked him down. And the guy fell over. And then he realized something. He goes, you know what? I cannot, I will not show any fear. I, I refuse to show any fear. So he got right back up and he went over to that bear and he just punched him right in the nose, you know? And now then it was on and uh, they were wrestling uh, and the bear was just playing with him, just playing with him. And the man was playing with them rough. I mean, rough. These guys, you know, the guy was getting bruised like crazy. And, but he would not, um, you know, succumb to weakness in that. And finally, once the bear was just had a big paw sitting on top of him and the guy was down, um, you know, the other bears just looked like they were so amused at all this. And, and uh, so he, he, he takes his paw off. The guy gets up limping and breathing hard. And, and the bears came up to them and spoke in Wyandotte. And they came up and they said, we've decided we're going to keep you. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to have you. We're going to have you as our pet, our new, you know, our new pet. We're going to take you home, you know, and you have no choice in this, but you're going to be our new pets. So the uh, bears started herding them a certain direction up toward the north, up in the, in the high country where there were a lot of caves and, and hills and and as they're walking the the man is just limping along you know he's bruised and the woman is just out of her mind she doesn't know what to do she knows her husband's really hurting you know but uh she doesn't know what to do and she doesn't know if she can make any kind of complaint but she went to the to the elder bear as they're walking she kind of nudged over to him and said is there something i i can do for my husband he's not going to complain but he's really bruised badly, you know, and is there something I can do? And the bear just kind of grumbled something. And he said, well, we're going to be coming into a big clearing up here pretty soon. And there's some, there's some plants I'll show you. Take some of those plants and chew on them, you know, and pack those, those on his bruises. You'll see, it'll take care of it. So she was listening really carefully. You know, she just loved her husband. She wanted to see him taken care of. So sure enough, this they came into this clearing and, and uh, he had to, she had to remind him, you know, where's that, where's that, no, they know quite, where's the medicines, you know, where's that, and the bear just kind of, oh, right over there, you know, see those leaves, go get those, so he, he did, well, she did, she went and got some of the leaves and, and uh, wadded them up, and then she made a, a little wad, stuck it in her mouth, and chewed on it, chewed on it, and as they're walking, and then she got him to stop, and he put, she put some of those, uh, those things, packed them around his bruises and wrapped, wrapped his, his legs and things and his arms that were so bruised. And they just kept walking. He never groaned. He never complained. He just kept going. And the woman was happy because she had at least done something. Well, they walked on and on. And finally, they came to a, a place where they started climbing. They climbed up into these rocks. Um, and they came to a cave and it was, a, it was a pretty big cave actually. And it was pretty comfortable. It was nice earth on the, on the, on the floor. And the bear said, this is where you guys are going to live. And uh, one of them was just singing the whole way. He kept singing this little song, you know, he just kept singing this the whole way until they got there. And he's just like, going on and on and uh, they they understood what he was saying um he was saying i want to have a new pet you know i want to have a new pet 
And uh, they they didn't at that time quite understand that he was talking about them, but it became pretty clear, you know, uh, in time, the bears came up to him and says, this is where you guys are going to stay. We will bring food to you. We'll come and we'll have fun together. We'll wrestle, we'll tumble, you know, and, um, you know, you guys are going to uh, bring entertainment for us, you know, and, uh, and we'll take care of you though. You'll be fine here. You'll like it here. And so they left him and they, but before they left, they said, but here's a warning. If you ever, ever try to escape and try to get out of here, we will kill you. You know, that's it. You know, that's where we draw the line. But we'll have a good time otherwise. So the bears went off and were doing their thing. And the man and the woman were looking at each other in this cave going, what are we going to do? But they thought, well, you know, let's just ride it out for now. Let's just see what happens. And uh, so time passed and the bears were, were bringing food to them. Uh, there was berries that were mashed up and the cakes had dried out in the sun. And so they always had something to eat. But then uh, there was one time one of the bears came to the man and he presented him a little berry pad and he said, this one is for you only. And uh, the woman was watching and she gave, they gave her something a little different, you know, and she's kind of worried and wondering about it, but um, she didn't say anything. And of course the man eats it. And after he eats it, he gets so sick. He is just sick. He's just throwing up. I mean, he's turning green and the woman is just, just oh, I mean, she's just so worried what's going on here. And, uh, so she goes running to the bears and she says, my husband is, is sick. I mean, he's just, he looks horrible. Something he ate, you know, what did you give him? And so the bears were looking at each other kind of, you know, mischievously like, ah, oh, ah, oh, so, you know, what happened to him? Oh, well, come and look, you know? And so they, they, the bears came and were looking at him. And, and so the bears were looking at, at each other going, yeah, I think we gave him too much. Yeah, okay, we gave him, gave him too much. Yeah, okay. And she's just begging them, what do I do? What do I do? You know, I got to take care of my husband. And they said, okay, this is what you do. And the bears told her a specific plant that they could go find. She could go find and she, you know, on her own, of course, and bring it back and prepare it, how to prepare it and make her husband drink this tea and he would be fine. So that's exactly what happened. She went running off into the woods and she came back with this plant and made a tea out of it, had her husband drink it. And in just a short time, he was fine. He was fine. Now, you know, of course she's remembering all this. I mean, she remembered about the plant that, that she uh, put on uh, her husband's bruises and he was fine. I mean, it just took care of the bruises. She also remembered this, you know, all these things are being stored in her, in her, in her mind, in her heart. Well, there came a time when, I mean, they were missing their family and I mean, it was fun. Yeah, it was fun. But I mean, after a while, you can only live in a cave so long, you know, and it's just, they just thought we got to get out of here. We have to escape. We have to try to escape. We have to do something. We can't live here forever. Well, you, you heard what the bear said, and I said, I know, but we can't live this way either. This is horrible. And so they talked together when the bears weren't around, and they decided, let's make a run for it. The bears go out every morning. They take a certain path, you know, down the, down the mountain, back into the woods. And, you know, once they're gone, they're usually gone for a few hours. Let's, let's take that time. We'll escape. We'll get away. So they, they, they planned and they, they started putting aside a little bit of food and storing it away. When the bears brought stuff, they would take off a little piece and store it. And, and uh, finally, the, the day they decided to do it came and, and uh, the bears, they went off. They went off to their, uh, whatever they were doing out there. I mean, hunting and uh, looking for foods. And, and the man and the woman said, let's go, let's go. And so they went running and they went the opposite, totally opposite direction. The bears went and they're, they're making good time. And I mean, they were both feeling pretty strong. Um, 
and you know they felt like they were just about ready to get far enough away that they had lost them and all of a sudden they heard some noises behind them and here come the bears and i mean they are just running with all the speed they can come you know come and here they are upon them and they took the man and they just knocked him down again they just totally totally ignored her they knocked him down and one of them just sat on him and just started just whacking on him just smacking and smacking and just clawing him with their claws i mean the guy was just shredded he had you know pieces of meat hanging on i mean it looked like he was just gonna be a piece of hamburger the way when and finally she's just begging she gets on him and just pulls him off you know and please you know save my husband don't kill him and the bears back off and they said so is this the way you reward those who take care of you and feed you every day is this the kind of appreciation you show running off running away we told you you know and she said she was just so distraught and she just said what can i do to heal my husband look at him there i mean he's dying he's bleeding all over the place we got to do something and the bears they looked at each other and they go all right tell her you know and so one of the bears came and said this is what you got to do and he the bear gave him gave her the instruction he said you have to make splints out of this kind of wood you have to do this you have to do that you know i mean all these things that that um, all the instructions that were given were very detailed about certain plants that had to be packed into those wounds and, and certain things that had to be done. So she did every one of them and she, she stitched them up where he was really um, bleeding horribly and, um, and they're heading back, heading back. And I mean, he's just barely walking and they, but they make it back to the cave and all during the time, you know, this walk back, the bear, one of the bears singing, you know, you know, and, uh, and they, they started to realize he's talking about us, you know, they're saying this is the new pet they want. And uh, it started to make them wonder, you know, if they have, they had pets in the past, because what they're saying is a new pet, you know, it's like, well, Waskenya is a pet. Waskenya is a is a new pet. So they started worrying about it a little bit, and and the woman started kind of peeking in on on some of the conversations when the bears were alone, and uh, she would leave her husband and she'd go quietly in the cave and find where the bears were, you know, coming together and listening and overhearing conversations and some of the bear conversations she couldn't make out she would they were using words that she wasn't familiar with but she did hear some things that really got her worried they were saying you know there's that one mushroom we haven't tried before and you know and i, I don't know if it's any good or not i don't well let's try it on this guy you know let's try it that's what he's for you know let's try that mushroom you know so they uh so that's what they would do they would bring in the food, the berry the cakes, and they would mash this mushroom in there with the, with the with the berry, just pack it in there, and they would bring it right to him and say, "This is your food, you know, eat it." And they would give her something a little special, something they knew was safe, and so he would try this thing. And of course, again, you know, he would just pass out. You know, I mean, his eyes are rolling back in his head, and you know, and she would totally freak out, and she's just crying and saying what have you done to my husband? I mean, look at him. He's, he's sick. He's going to die. What do I do? And the bears would look at each other again and say, okay, they know quite, this is what you do for medicine. And they'd send her off on a journey somewhere out there and they knew she'd come back. So, um, and she would every time she came back with the, the specific medicines and she would take him and you know, heal him and whatever it was. And so she's learning all these things, all these cures, and then this one time, they, after this, they go, we got to get away. This is just, we can't live like this. We're like, you know, we're being used, you know, as a captive here. This is not like we're really a part of the family you know, among these bears. They're just using us. We're doing these experiments with it, you know, on us. And uh, so they talked about it. The same thing happened. They said, okay, this time, you know, we went downhill when the bears came after us, let's go up, let's start climbing. Let's start climbing the mountain, you know, and, 
and we'll get away that way and, and we'll confuse them. Well, so the day came, they had set aside some food, they packed it away. And once the bears were gone on their, on their journey, doing what bears do out there, the man and the woman got together and they took off. And this time they started climbing the mountain behind them and they climbed and they climbed and they climbed and they're getting higher and higher in the mountains and they're starting to go over really big rocks, huge rocks. And eventually, you know, they think they're, they're, they're safe. They look behind them and here come the bears. I mean, it's like they're climbing these rocks like they were just like pillows or something. They just came flying up that Next thing you know, they're surrounded by these bears and the biggest one comes up and says, so is this the way you treat those who take care of you? Is this the way you show, um, you know, thanks for all that we've done feeding you and giving you a safe place to live? Just for that, this is what you get. And the bear just went wham, just knocked him. And he went flying over this rock, this, this rock ledge that they were on. And he went down to the bottom and I mean, the woman was just horrified, just horrified. It's like this guy, this poor guy, man. I mean, he gets everything. And she went running down to him and he's laying in a pile. I mean, one leg's sticking this way wrong and the other arm is going that way wrong. And she, he's just, I mean, he's just, every bone, it looks like every bone in his body's broken. She went up to him and she's just sobbing, you know, and the bears come down singing again and she comes up to them and she says please please what do i do to heal my my husband look at him i mean he's got broken bones he's got one elbow that's just bent the wrong way and, and so the bear looked at each other and start telling her this is how you do it this is how you're gonna fix him, you know. But why are you guys always trying to get away from us? You know, I mean, we make life wonderful for you. So anyway, she's not listening to that. She's just listening to all the instructions and she gets the plants. Again, there's new plants to take away pain uh, and, and to, you know, to and the bears show her how to set those bones and wrap them and give her, you know, make him strong enough and they haul him away, haul him back to the, haul him down to the cave and they put him in there where he heals up. Well, you know, at this, at this point, you know, it's like, this is, this is horrible, you know, and they're, all they can think about is, you know, we're going to die here. You know, we'll never see our families again. We'll never see our village. And they started losing hope. And she started feeling uh, crushed and feeling just like, she couldn't do this you know she just can't do this all the time this is too much and um the bears noticed the change and even though the man you know was restored and healed and um he, they noticed the change on them i mean he would still play with them he'd still wrestle with them but it just didn't seem like he had much spark and uh so the bears went away and you could see him over there kind of huddling you know and talking and and uh they couldn't hear anything of what they were saying but in time, and I mean, it's getting fall now. I mean, it, they've been there all summer long, you know, and it's, it's getting cool. And we know bears hibernate in the wintertime. So what are they going to do? And so the bear, one of the, the, the elder bear comes up to them and right in front of them, he says, you know, there's a reason. There's a reason for this. He says, there's a reason why we captured you. And there's a reason why we chose you two. First of all, we know you care for each other. We've been watching you. We've been watching you for a long time, you know, in your, when you go out from your village. Uh, we've had others we've, we've taken, but they don't last. They never learn. They give up or one runs off, you know, runs away thinking about themselves and they don't come back. So that's why we're always looking for just the right pet, you know, to have here. And we have given you. And then now the bear speaking to the woman, he says, we have given you all the knowledge we have about these plants, you know, out here that we take care of and uh, fertilize and, and look after. And now you have this. Now I've taught you everything that we know. And soon we're going to be hibernating. And it's time for you guys to go. It's time for you to go back to your village. 
and you go back and take all these all these medicines and all the teachings back to your people and once you get back there you start becoming the one who heals and uh, don't ever forget about the bears don't ever forget about us you know we're the ones that taught you and so carry that carry us with with you and so that's what they did they finally packed up and they were allowed to go back home and they were the people in the village were so happy to see them they all thought they were they were gone they were dead you know and and uh, they were so happy to be back you know seeing little kids running around again instead of you know all these furry animals it was just so wonderful to be home and uh, and this woman became like this amazing healer in the village and it just seemed like there was nothing she couldn't fix and it was it was it was wonderful medicines powerful medicines just all out there in the woods they could find you know with that knowledge she was given um, she was able to become uh, basically the the mother of the bear clan so this is one of our stories and one of the stories that is um, we've carried on uh, I think about all the stories that we've probably lost you know all those clan stories that we just have no clue about anymore because someone didn't ask to hear it, you know, and it wasn't, uh, it wasn't um, remembered. But this is one that uh, is an important one for us as wind up people. And, um, and, uh, you know, I, I just, I, I feel good to share it with you. And, and I'm, and I'm happy to do so. Yeah, to jamais. And if there's anything you guys want to share to or speak about, um, feel free. Hey there, Jim. <laughs> hey, Scano. Scano. Scano, Richard. Uh, first off, uh, say hi to Carol for me. Um, that's the first time I ever heard you say the, the one dot word for medicine. And it sounds real similar to uh, the Seneca word for medicine as well. And also, and you probably heard a Cayuga word, Ganoqua. Hi. I love you. I wonder if they're all rooted in the same. Oh yeah, yeah, they're all Iroquois languages. Are all, are all pretty. Yeah, you, once you see the the structure, it's all there. Mm -hmm. it's like, um, we say uh, for "I love you," we say "yondoron kwa," yondoron kwa, and that "yon" is the part that's me to you, and uh, "doron," uh, "doron" is it's like the um, the part of the word that you would use for respect or honor or Oh. uplifting so it's not necessarily love as far as the way english interprets love right. you know, be so many different things it has a lot more to do with i really honor you you know i give you honor right um, so that's uh yeah right. yeah i'm not I'm, I'm not as familiar with wine dot as i am with uh like cayuga and seneca but i i can pick some similarities out yeah for sure for sure i know that's what i like listening to the cayuga thanksgiving address too and i hear the you know i i can almost tell where 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 it's you know where they are in the you know, address because i hear the certain words you know that, that jump out right um, some of them are very different you know like we have different words for the moon uh so sometimes names for things are different because um uh, well, I mean, it's like our word for deer, right? It's ours is skinoto, and your guys is tejontes or tejontes, which is you know the ears. Talking about the ears, the long ears, and ours is um, skinoto, which is much more about describing its personality as a peaceful animal. You know, skinoto, a skinoto. So right. those descriptions are different. Yeah, once again, it's real similar to the, the Seneca and when they refer to a deer, especially when they're referring to the clan. Um, several years ago, I was up in Buffalo at a, at a training for work and there were um, several people from the Seneca nation there at Allegheny. And we introduced ourselves and um, they introduced themselves in English and one said there's from the deer clan and and I really didn't know any better then and I said and they all started laughing at me 
Oh, <laughs> yeah. Because I just said they're from the jackass clan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's our word too. Yeah, Tehontetsi is the one. You know, we say yeah. The the one the long-eared one is the um, is the yeah. It's the donkey or the mule. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Mule Clan, huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Richard, there's a couple of comments here I wanted to share. Maybe you can address these. Um, one, uh, Alice is asking uh, the title of the story. And I, I had it, but I wanted to, uh, maybe you, you would want to confirm the, the name um, and the title of that story. You know, I, I'm not really sure uh, if there's an actual title for it. So, yeah, it would be nice if somebody could come up with a title that kind of wrapped it all up, but maybe about how the, how the bear, let's see. Um, hmm. Let's see. Yeah. I don't know how the medicines were given to the Wyandotte, how they became, it's, it'd be like a long, uh, yeah, my, my, my ideas are going to make it really long. <laughs> let's see uh, how medicines were brought to the Wyandotte or how the medicine, how the bears brought medicine to the Wyandotte maybe uh, something like that maybe yeah and feel free to to use the story and you know to share it with children or you know uh, others you know just make sure it's known it's a wind up story because there, there's going to be variations in some of these stories and they will be different you know so because i know uh we, we hear a lot of longhouse stories and it's like hey that sounds like oh no no it's a little different <laughs> It's like, but sometimes it's those differences are things that like our, our family left out because they forgot those or they just didn't think about them at the time, you know, and so uh, some of them are fleshed out. But when you hear uh, other, uh, other uh, people talking about them, it's like, oh, there's a piece missing in that story. I think this fits in there. This is the part that's missing. So it's kind of neat to hear those. Yeah. Uh, Richard, there's another question. Um from George, he asks, uh, could you talk about the significance or the relevance of the bear's song? Ah, yeah, the <laughs> well, now, um, this is a song that I, I kind of put in there myself. This is <laughs> my, uh, but it, it's, yehe, yeatme, waskinyase. Yehe means I want, or it also means um, I'm thinking about, so it means yehe, and then yeatme, yeatme means uh, to have it, me to have it. And then waskenya, waskenya is the word for a pet or, a, or even a domestic animal that you would um, care for. We do have a word for you know, big domestic animals, so that's a little different, but waskenya, when you say waskenya say, with say on the end of it, that makes it something new. So, it's just, that's just part of, I just put in the story. So, and I, I don't know, it adds something, I guess, you know, to, I would imagine they'd be grunting something along their way as they're walking through the woods. So, <laughs> so yeah, there's, I mean, in these storytelling, you know, every time a story is told, you know, people interpret differently and they also put in their own little expressions and, and that's what makes it fun and interesting. And, so that you're not just hearing the exact same thing every time too. You know, each storyteller has its has their specific things they like to draw attention to. But that this is actually, it was actually from a song that I had put together for the children to sing um, in school, you know, and, you know, I want a new pet, I want a new pet and uh, it'll make me happy. So it's kind of like a begging, pleading uh, to the parents, you know, <laughs> this would really make me happy. <laughs> I'd be, I'd be really, really happy about this if I got a new pet. And so, something to irritate their 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 uh, parents when they get home. You know? <clears throat> well, and the sentiment behind the song, as a bear, expresses that that anticipated joy. But as the story gets repeated, <laughs> and I think that song probably is the anchor for what a lot of the kids take away as well as adults yeah. but it has a different relevance i would think to the people who hear it in the future ah. as mm -hmm. sort of an omen of 
possession and the desire to control um, and the potential both positive and negatives of that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, once you start realizing they're singing about us, it's like, whoa, <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Hmm. Other comments or, or thoughts or feelings about that story or thoughts or insults or you know yes, well, those, <laughs> thoughts, uh, you know you can keep those in the chat so we keep oh them. yeah okay yeah. <laughs> well I, I you know I've really appreciated it and uh you know these things are so important to me I love the the stories you know and I you know, of course, these are kind of times, you know, that we would have our stomp dances and our, you know, our, our social dance dances. And so sometimes between songs, you know, somebody will stand up and give a little story. Sometimes it's a little too chaotic at that moment to tell stories because there's so much noise going on and everybody's either eating or they're chatting. But um, in, a, in a smaller <laughs> gathering, it, it really works pretty nicely to to set aside some time to throw some of those winter stories. The, the winter stories we say are the ones where the animals talk, you know, they speak. So historical stories or whatever, that's different. You can tell those anytime, you know, stuff that happened and things your ancestors remembered. And, but yeah, once the animals start talking, those are winter time. <laughs> Uh, a couple other uh, comments or some questions. Uh, KP says, very engaging story and thanks you. Um, there's, there's a question here from uh, Eric. He asks, uh, are there any stories uh, related to holidays or uh, um, the yeah, holidays in uh, Indian country? Hmm. That's a good question. Our, you know, of course, our holidays would be our Thanksgiving um, gatherings. So, but uh, as far as stories, well, I mean, we do have related stories, right? Like um, about the the maple. You know, um, in the in the we have our maple ceremony where we gather that sap and we boil, and then um, you know, so we do that and we make syrup and or or sugar, and we have a ceremony that comes after that where we pass around a little drink, you know, so everyone gets a chance to have a little sip of that. And, and we give thanks, we give a special Thanksgiving address and that. Um, so, so we do have stories about, you know, that those maple, when they were first made, the creator, our creator, you know, made them just like pure syrup coming out of those trees. And, and then it was the, his, his brother, you know, the ornery one, you know, the, the, the the light side and the dark side of things, you know, here, the dark side decided to, you know, water those down, put all the, poured all this water in the trees and made them, so you have to really work for it, which is probably good for us anyway. Um, but so, you know, things like that, sometimes things will relate, but um, yeah, I don't know any specifically, any stories that actually relate to a, one of those ceremonies. We do, I mean, we talk about our, um, the strawberry, you know, as being a, the first, uh, in, in Wyandotte we say Tichon, Tichon is the word for strawberry. And we're giving thanks for that strawberry because it's the first fruits of the year, you know, the first wild fruit that comes out. And, you know, it's a whole ceremony is, is giving thanks for that little fruit because we had been, I mean, our ancestors had been wintering, you know, and basically living on dry stuff a whole winter long. And so when it finally warmed up enough that those strawberries come out, it's like, this is a time to celebrate, you know? And so things were, and, and that uh, the leaves are even considered a tea. They make tea out of the, the strawberry leaf. There's a lot of things that has to do with the strawberries that, that go on. And some of them are more ceremonial, so we can't really speak of them now, but, um, but it's a very important fruit, you know? And, it might seem insignificant to some to have a whole ceremony that just involves giving thanks for strawberries, but it's, it was so important to our ancestors and, and that's why we remember them, you know, so, um, so, uh, in this way, we remember our ancestors. So, um, yeah. And, uh, the blackberry, you know, 
that that's the plant that comes out uh, in the middle of summer when the moon, you know, it's it's the full moon ceremony, but it's a time where we give thanks for um, uh, our grandmother moon and basically the one who, you know, she controls the, the seasons and also, um, you know, a woman's periods and, you know, so uh, the, the birth cycles of things. Um, so it's all things feminine, really, that ceremony. So we give thanks for that too at that time. And those, I guess they all have to do with our story, especially a lot of our creation stories, just about who, you know, how the moon was formed and, and all these things. So, but they're all kind of woven in. It's really hard to just take out little pieces and Thank you, Richard. Uh, a couple other comments or questions. Um, Charity asked if, uh, if we're able to uh, um, see, uh, see these recordings uh, or share them with others. And, and we are able to do this through our uh, YouTube, uh, ATTC YouTube archive. So maybe uh, Ella, if, if you wanted to post that link for folks there, if they wanted to go and um, check, check out some previous broadcasts, um, you, could, you could share it in that way. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I think that'd be great. I think it would be important for people to, you know, respect our, um, um, uh, our protocols, you know, that there are some stories that we just shouldn't be telling in the in the summertime. Um, I mean, I know there are some people that, that feel no difference at all, you know, about one story to another, but to respect us, you know, and our, this is what we're trying to do. When we're trying to revive our culture, we're trying to revive everything, you know, so we're trying to um, you, you know, everything has a context. And so these stories do have a context. So it is important um, that this would be something to, for winter, winter time, these stories. The last two anyway. Yeah, we, we wouldn't have had the European holidays. Those are kind of like foreign things. I mean, even if you think about it, English language is a foreign language here. Right. That's right. Yeah, sure is. Um, Ed, uh, Ed asked, uh, who, who was the person from around the grove? The was person around, from around the grove. I think he met from Grove, Oklahoma. Oh. oh. I, so, I used there to live there. Ceremony. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought maybe it was something related to the story. No, no, I'm sorry. That's awesome. <laughs> That's where Oklahoma came from. They said, okay, Lahoma. Thanks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I needed that one. <laughs> uh, but Lindsay sa says, uh, I think it is very important to carry these stories down to future generations. These are part of our history and culture. Mm -hmm. Yes. Je Jessica asks, what is your word for moon? I think you'd mentioned it, but it did. Um, uh, okay, so we have our, what our word for moon is, it describes the nighttime orb. So we say, wasonteye yadishra. Yadishra is the word for the orb. Wesonteye means the nighttime orb. So in daytime, the sun would be Dmetaye uh, Yadishra. So the sun or the moon is Wesonteye Yadishra. And we also say uh, Yashuta because that's our grandmother. We say grandmother Yashuta. Yashuta. So she she's the one who is the, you know, the, uh, yeah. So it's kind of a long one. So it's kind of like it means uh, on the night. Uh, the ye on the end means So that's that's the moon. The night orb. Yashuta, grandmother. Uh, another, 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 thank you, thank you, Richard. Another listener uh, says, uh, makes the comment, that she says, these stories are, are also part of healing. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hmm. 
Um, I would like to say something, and I'm sorry, but I'm such a slow typer that if I finish to type of what I wanted to say, the meeting is over. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I prefer to talk than to type, and I'm in old generations. So what I really like about this story, because um, I live on the Rosebud Reservation, so here at the Lakota, my Hunka family, which is my adopted family, is uh, from Chine River Reservation. And my brother-in-law practically told me the story about the bear in the, among the Lakota, mm -hmm. you know. And, but this uh, story is deep. So both have similarities. Mm -hmm. So the bear brings the medicines uh, to the people in time of, in hard time, in difficulties, is the, the, is the one that passed on the knowledge of bio, herbal medicine, you know, mm -hmm. that come from the earth because of his claws, you know, he digs and he knows all the roots and the plants. Mm -hmm. uh, but what is a peculiar in this story uh, is the relationship said that the bear, uh, the bears uh, pick this couple because yeah. of their love yeah. and with each other. And so I like that the gym made the connection between medicine and love because it seemed that in this story there is, there are both. You cannot have the medicine if you don't have compassion, if you don't have love, you will not receive it. So every medicine person and herbal medicine, man or woman, need to have the compassion for the people mm -hmm. in order to be gifted with the knowledge of the medicine, of mm -hmm. the herbs to give. And it's interesting that the man, so the husband is the one that has to endure all the sicknesses, <laughs> you know, in order for the woman to ask for help, mm. you know, and feel the compassion for him and, and go to the bear with mm. her love for her husband to receive the knowledge. And she received it because she loves him. Yes. So I, I love the story because of this connection. Mm -hmm. And I think, and I believe all the medicine people that I recognize as, and I uh, respected, I respect everyone, but those that I really listen to are those that show me the compassion mm -hmm. because there are many people that, that, uh, that seek knowledge for power, yeah. but this, in this story, the power uh, is the power of love. Mm -hmm. is not the power of gaining something right. and, and there is always whatever you receive is to give mm. so mm -hmm. thank you oh yeah yeah oh is that from the white horse store what, what was that sean did she work at that store in uh, Rosebud before that, uh, what is it, Wild Horse or White Horse or something like that? Are you asking to who? Uh, uh, you, you, you. Oh, this is the, the, the story of the bear? Oh, uh, I don't, oh, well, it's okay. Hmm. we do find that way i i wanted to know if i could could say something mm -hmm. can i be heard please please jennifer you have the floor um okay my name is jennifer and i'm from the uh, shinnecock nation out in long island and I love your story. It's an absolutely beautiful story. But you said something, however, you said something in the beginning that um, how, you know, people don't really ask to hear stories like that. And I just want to say that I don't think it's the fact that they don't ask. I think it's one of the things that has happened to indigenous people has been intergenerational trauma. And because of that, because our ancestors were told not to speak their language, not to tell these stories. And because of that, they were not able to pass some of these stories down 
to generations to generations. The gift that we get is when some of our elders still remember these stories that they heard when they were younger. And that's a gift. Mm. And what I feel is what you have given us, at least you have given me, is a gift. Because unfortunately, um, my people, we don't have that many stories um, from, from the past that we can pass down. We do have some. I'm not going to say we don't have any. We do have some. But um, however, when it comes to stories, I would say from like the 18, 17, 1600s, mm -hmm. no, we don't have that many of those stories because they were taken away from us. And, and a lot of us, you know, don't really know how to ask the questions. And however, there are some of us that do. And the ones that do, it's a gift that we're able to do that. And we're able to bring it back to our people so they know that, you know, we do have stories and we do have, have um, these gifts that will um, continue to keep us as who we are as indigenous people. So mm -hmm. I wanna say to Bhutne to you, thank you for your stories. And I wanna say to our young people that, you know, if you feel that you wanna know, it's okay to ask mm -hmm. because there are some elders out there that do remember and will gladly share. There are some that, that won't. Mm -hmm. However, there are mostly some that will gladly share these stories so we can keep it going from generation to generation. Yeah, Jamais, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Jennifer. Well, I do know a lot of times it's like you hear people all over the country saying that they've lost so much and that they can never get it back. Um, within our tribe here, we believe that's not true. Uh, we're always told from childhood that we need to go out there and fast every year. We need to learn that kind of way and to be able to uh, get that knowledge from the spirits. And that old knowledge will come back, the old medicines, the old ways, the old ceremonies, and all those things. I mean, and it's true. I've seen that. I mean, our tribe, even though we might still have some, but um, our tribe used to be, we had some people that were, you know, kind of from the Madewan society, but um, they said that we were, when we were at our very strongest, was way before that. And I've seen ceremonies come back at that um, much earlier than the Madewan society was. I, I think about things like that, too. I think about how all the songs started somewhere. You know, they all had a beginning and it might have been from that person that went out and fasted, you know, and um, and this is and, and they had a sweat and they came back and this is the song they brought to the people, you know, and and now it's always being sung, you know, every year. And so I, I think every st song has a beginning and uh, it, the same thing can happen today, too. I think we can get we can have our own songs again. I mean, it is possible. Um, but I know what she's saying, too, because a story that has to do with um, all these little details and things that's been passed down generation to generation. You know, if that's not being told anymore and that person who knows those stories dies, that story is gone. It doesn't mean the stories are gone, but it does mean that particular one has stopped. Um, but I think it's, it is true. Everything, you know, it does have a beginning. Um, uh, some things, you know, start very small, you know, and then they, they, they build. You look at uh, a lot of the Longhouse um, songs that we sing, that we've been singing for hundreds of years, I guess. Um, they've, they've evolved, you know, they've changed. They've, uh, they've become a little different, you know, they've become, um, kind of, you know, the way songs are sung at Six Nations are a little different than we sing in Oklahoma. So, it's neat to see that, you know, those are all signs, you know, that a culture is alive and it's living and breathing and um, new life is being, you know, going into it. 
Yes. And we're also, we're going through a healing, you know, mm -hmm. we have to go through a healing and I feel that these stories uh, are helping us to, to heal, you know, and, and that's the, that's the, you, you know, to me, that's, that's the gift that we get is mm -hmm. that we're able to heal mm -hmm. through these stories. Thank you again, Jennifer. And uh, Sean, thanks for uh, being on today, too. Uh, Sean's uh, our co-director here at the center. So happy to have you uh, on, on uh, the call today or the broadcast today, Sean. Appreciate it. Uh, we are uh, at the top and past the top of the hour. So I uh, there's still some really great comments coming in. Um, appreciate everyone attending today and being part of this. And I just really want to... Uh, uh, express my uh, gratitude and uh, uh, thanks to to Richard for for being with us these past four uh, sessions for stories. So it uh, means a lot, and um, I just I just want to thank you very much uh, again, mm -hmm. Richard. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. So I think with that uh, we're going to conclude today's broadcast. But I I wanted to uh, just wish everyone. Uh, good holiday and uh, stay safe and uh, stay healthy and stay connected. And we'll uh, we'll we'll rebroadcast our next storytelling event uh, January fifth uh, at two p.m. Central. So uh, perhaps we'll see you then. Uh, and, but until then, take care. And um, signing off from here uh, here in Iowa City. Um, everybody have a have a have a good day. Mm -hmm. All Let's right. Let's go. Ahead. Hey, Richard, on again. Uh, hopefully, uh, I see you in August. Yeah. So, all right. Okay. Good to see everybody. Stay well.